Hey guys, what's up? Aru! Yep, it's finally here. Forina is on her way to my account and taking all my Primo gems. But there are some things that Forina might be hiding up her sleeve or hat that we also might be able to take. In this video, we'll go over as much of the 4.2 trailer and Forina's teaser, the sin of Forina or Fosalor 500 years ago, the self-fulfilling prophecy that is mentioned by Nicole, as well as the biggest facade of Fontaine that is itself. As always, timestamps in the description, but first, a quick word from our sponsor, Genshin Star. Genshin Star is a licensed fan merch store for all your Genshin Impact merch needs. They've got pretty much anything you would ever want. Like, really, anything. And surprise, surprise, because Christmas is coming, they are too. Their Christmas Advent calendars contain 24 door grids for each day from December 1st all the way to Christmas Day, with surprising gifts and trinkets from each door. Of course, as I've mentioned, they've got many, many other lovely merch too, so if you're interested, go click on the link below and use my coupon code ARU8017 for 10% off on your orders. Thanks again to Genshin Star, now on with the video. So the real masquerade of the guilty finally begins. And the star of that show is yours truly, Forina. Or better yet, Fosalor or Egeria. The quote-unquote Hydro Archon's true plans will finally be revealed in 4.2 and we'll see the real Fosalors that's been hiding behind Forina. She's been theorized to have two or maybe three personalities and we can at least notice one of those in the trailer. We know of Farina's funny, dramatic, and loud Archon version so far, but now we have another Farina, one that seems to be wearing a darker shade of clothing. Something similar to morning clothes if I could make a guess of what's happening or what's already happened. But what interests me the most is that she highlights how magnificent and dramatic the end of it all will be, likely all of Fontaine. And more interesting is that it ends with a trial, something that Nouvellet firmly stands by and is the identity of Fontaine. Posalor's idea of justice, as mentioned in the Varuna the Gemstone, has been hinted at since the game's release. Her ideals have no stains, and only the tribunal can judge someone, even herself. And more fitting that an Archon is punished through a trial with a death sentence too. So what did Fosalor do that would result in her being punished with death? A recent video I made highlighted a sin that Egeria committed after she was born. And here in 4.2, it seems we'll be getting more info on that possible sin. That sin is possibly related to the Primordial Sea. Egeria cried into the Primordial Sea long ago that may or may not have contaminated those waters. But this event happened thousands of years ago go after the end of the Dragon Primordial War. So will this be the same sin that Fosalor is carrying with her? Or is this a different sin that Fosalor made herself once she became the Archon of Justice? Farina, Fosalor, and Egeria, whoever will be the revealed character, has been building up her plan since the past 500 years, as mentioned in her trailer. And this plan of hers seems to be related to the Flood Prophecy, a self-fulfilling prophecy if I may take a guess, or one that has already happened. This prophecy has been looming over Fontaine, and everyone in Fontaine who's known this prophecy is already affected by it. So much so that their behavior and maybe even their actions are affected too. Just like what Farina says in her teaser, everyone is an actor. Some citizens accept this and simply wait until it happens, while others are too occupied with their current lives and will only act once it's already there. Now while there are characters and organizations that are trying to save Fontaine, their strategy remains almost the same. To act once the flood actually happens, which is reflected in Forina's case in her stage play of the prophecy. Now, something interesting about Forina, as well as the trailer, is a voice line of what sounds like Nicole saying the words, The prophecy, yes, what has been prophesied will be fulfilled. For those who don't know because it was only from an event, Nicole or N is a member of the Hexen Circle Witches, particularly the Witch of World Order and Direction. So she may or may not already know what will happen or what has happened to Fontaine already. And she also likely knows what Farina has been planning these past 500 years. Something interesting about Nicole is her words when we first heard her. And it's something that I think you guys should remember while we're still in Fontaine. Unfortunately, the fate of Tevat cannot easily be changed. Perhaps a god may have a slim chance, but for anyone else, 
<clears throat> Who can say? When a small animal runs into a tree trunk, though the tree may sway, it is not displaced. The same is true of fate, like a vase that falls to the ground. Whether it is broken by a cat or by a bird, the result is still a broken vase, is it not? History does not change easily, but human hearts can. Believe your own eyes. Only that which you see is true. What is unseen is but an illusion. Now doesn't all of that sound familiar? These lines were a hint given to us before moving on to Fontaine. Paired with Ermin Soul changing history or memories of people and books in Tevat, the idea that Tevat is not real or has been changed from what was real is even more prevalent now, which I've theorized already through the allegorical tales. Not everything we see may be real. Some of that may just be an illusion. And Fontaine could be one of those illusions. This is gonna sound crazy, but Nouvellet stopping the people of Fontaine while being in the Upper Epicles in his trailer could also be a hint to that, creating a moment in time and keeping it in place until the right opportunity comes. Not to mention that scene where everybody is underwater, as well as Nouvellet's lines about sin. You who were born with original sin, go forth and search for the long-buried truth before all is lost beneath the waves. Which was likely told to him by Farina. And that same opportunity shows itself once Nouvellet understands his position as the spokesperson of Fontaine. Because he will then judge the god of Fontaine, the same god who taught him. And Fontaine not flooding isn't the real Fontaine. It's a fabrication that Fossilor or Farina created until someone can finally judge her for her long unpunished sin and fulfill that prophecy for her. All of that suddenly being shouldered by Nouvellet once the time comes. But of course, this is the plan of Farina, all of which goes against the ideals of everyone in Fontaine after Aguirre's rule. This could explain the Oceanids being exiled, as well as the prophecy that every Fontanian knows about for 500 years. Similar to Makoto and the Sakura tree, the Oratress is something Fosalor created 500 years ago to prepare for the real trial that is her own. Only instead of holding memory, it holds all the indemnitium of Fontaine, the unpaid debt of a sin that must be punished since 500 years ago. And that blue guillotine with tear motifs could be the manifestation of all of that indemnitium, of which will then pay her debt, fulfill the prophecy of Fontaine, and finally leave her or left her alone on that throne. This could also reflect Farina crying on the throne 500 years ago, pointing to Farina crying at the Fountain of Lucene, which could be Fossilor behind the mirror in Farina's teaser. Something I want you guys to take a look at is the hilt or the handle of this pure hydro sword. Apart from it looking like an oceanid, it also has what seems to be a chess piece. Now currently we don't know if the hydro gnosis is even the oratress itself, but if it is, then this guillotine could be what the gnosis looks like. Ironically, if this is going to slice off Fossilor's head, then she basically rescinds her position as the hydro archon. Note that I've been saying for Rina and Fossilor separately as different entities. Because honestly, I can't tell who's who anymore. Now if this is indeed the Hydronosis, then it should look like a chess piece. And it kind of does. It reminds me of a queen piece from the spikes around it. But the queen piece already belongs to the Animonosis. So if we go by only this Indemnitian guillotine's looks, then it could be a pawn, a bishop, a knight, or a king. Honestly, I think it's the queen piece and Venti is the king. I mean, Venti's Gnosis has crossed on it, which is similar to an actual king piece. But Farina's Gnosis could be a pawn too, since the Oceanids were spread all over Tevet. Farina's skills also include the Salon Solitaire as well as the Singer of Many Songs, which could be quote-unquote pawns of Farina. But it could also mean that she is the king and her pawns do the rest, just like Nouvellet and everyone else in Fontaine. But we already know that she's been doing a lot of things behind the scenes. It could also be 
a knight, which I think would fit her the most, since we have the Lock Knights who once served under Fontaine, as well as Farina's Surintendant Cheval Marais, which is a seahorse, and that roughly translates to Superintendent Horseman, a high commanding officer on a horse, a knight of which France was, from my understanding, quite a big player in the knightdom during their time. So this may look like a chess piece, but it might not actually be until it's officially said in-game. And I'm not good at playing chess either. But quite a lot of Genshin lore tubers already made their videos on chess within the game and what it may mean. I linked some of them in the description, so give them a watch as well as well, go watch more of them. <laughs> what I can tell is for you to like the video, subscribe if you haven't yet, and hit the bell for more of my content. Thank you. Now let's talk about people who can use abyss powers. Skirk appearing in 4.2 is honestly something I wanted to happen since Child mentioned her after coming to Fontaine, but I didn't expect it to be this early. Skirk was Child's mentor when he fell into the abyss as a kid. He fell into a crack on the ground while running away from bears and wolves, which led him to the abyss and met Skirk there at some point. Then he was taught everything he knew. Weaving through the abyss, his combat prowess, as well as his abyss power, foul legacy. Skirk's design reminds reminds me of Fuwa and Benares from Honkai Impact 3rd. Apart from that, I've got nothing else. It does seem like Child's Constellation is the same constellation forming when the whale starts piercing the sky though. Skirk appears in the same location as the whale, so maybe she'll pop in to help us fight it? Or that she's the whale? I, I don't know. I'm more of the former since I believe that the whale is Egeria, but you can tell me in the comments who's who. Now as for Skirk's element, she's likely Hydro or Abyss Hydro if Hoyo creates a new element. I mean, we already have Numa and Osha as the Abyss and Celestia, so we can only wait until we get a new one. Moving on to the Narwhal itself, its name is the All-Devouring Narwhal, as well as a title, Visitor from the Far Side of the Sea of Stars. Implying that we'll likely meet more visitors from the quote-unquote Sea of Stars later on. I'm kind of assuming that the Sea of Stars is referring to the primordial sea here and not actual space. But if the sky is a lie, then it's likely that everything around Tevat is the primordial sea, which could also be space. But if we're taking references from Honkai Impact, we now have the Sea of Quanta and the imaginary tree as the Ermin Soul in Genshin. Apart from Skirk looking like Fuwa in Benares and Tevat meaning Ark or Chest, there's no concrete evidence I could say right now. Whales, however, we might have seen around Tevat already. The Chasm, Inazuma, and Fontaine's waters have multiple scales as well as fossils of ancient marine creatures, not only highlighting previous Diluvian periods but also possibly the primordial sea and what it used to look like. These whales could be one of the few creatures we know of so far who dwelled in the primordial sea. The knight within the whale, which looks oddly similar to the serpent knights from Conria, can summon Fontmer aberrants, which is pretty interesting since Farina can summon those same Fontmer aberrants, and can use similar movements of Child's Phase is a really weird one. Or should I say that it looks like an antimatter legion mob from Star Rail? It could imply that Conria's serpent knights were inspired by the abyss creatures or abyss knights in the primordial sea, which means that it's a whole new world in the abyss not just Conria. An old one-eyed King Ermin could have unlocked that abyss knowledge by theoretically sacrificing his eye. But that's a different theory altogether. The region of Poisson will also be flooded based on the special program. And from what sounded like Navia speaking, she also seems to speak to her father, Callus, who she usually calls Papa, possibly after that event in Poisson. So yeah, there goes my favorite spot to chill on. Erinese, which we've spoken about before in my recent videos, is based on the three goddesses of vengeance on those who do any wrong. Now, the only mention of Erinese I found is a play of the tragedy regarding Erinese and Egeria's farewell, followed by a reference to the Monty Python movie about a lock knight being portrayed as King Arthur. Quite a comedy, I must say. So maybe it's a similar relation between Ruka Devata, King Deshret, and the goddess of flowers. Egeria's farewell is likely when she left Fontaine 500 years ago and fell in Sumeru, leaving Erinese in Fontaine, of which is possibly somewhere in the Erinese forest. Mort, which means dead in French and Italian, in the Mort region is where this cool lighthouse is located. 
This to me seems like the Tower of Remoria, which existed to guide ships of Old Fontaine. Based on the book, The History of the Decline and Fall of Remoria, as well as the Golden Troop artifact set, Remoria was a kingdom ruled by Remus, the God King of Old Old Fontaine, which came before Aguirre's rule. Long story short, the god king Remus wanting to avoid the predicted destruction of his kingdom and possibly Tavat, he basically mixed a quote-unquote golden ichor and the primordial sea, creating a mixture that could transcend and obtain independent and eternal lives. But that didn't really work out well for normal mortal beings, which ended up with waters dyed in black from their howls and cries of terror and pain, which could be similar to what happened in Risley's story quest. This kingdom and mad god king was soon followed by its fall, with only some scholars being left to record what they could of its history. Its connection to the Narses and Cruz is due to the Golden Troop and Ordo, not to be mistaken with the Institute who settled in the ruins of an ancient civilization, i.e. Remoria. So if you're curious to know that story, then you'd better start playing the quest and reading some Remoria lore. And there we go, everything I could pour out of my brain regarding the 4.2 special program. With a bit of lore and a bit of theory, of course. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed that splash of multiple little theories about what might happen next in 4.2. Also, comment below if Farina loses her head or if Fontaine is stuck in a mirror world. Really, because of that mirror scene, I am sure that the real Fontaine is already drowning and everything is just frozen in time. Well, 4.2 is two days away and I wanted to make this video just to clean up whatever mini theories I had before it came out. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one right here. Yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe, and hit the bell for more of my ramblings, and stay mad, theorists. Bye!